Hi guys, my name is Ginger Franklin, and Carolina, if you're watching, you can stop watching because this is a review. Sit. Not you, pilot. Today I'm going to be reviewing nine of the Jane Eyre film adaptations. I'm going to be reviewing them and then comparing them ultimately to the book. So this review is going to be a little bit different than all of my other, um... Victorian movie reviews. I'm just gonna go from the oldest one to the newest adaptation. The first Jane film adaptation on the list is Jane Eyre 1934 and this was the worst Jane Eyre that has ever been made. It really wasn't Jane Eyre. It's like they just made a Hallmark type movie and put Jane Eyre title on it. It was stupid. It was only one hour long. Um, Jane was blonde and sassy. Uh, Mr. Rochester was nice, and Adele was his niece. He was going to get his marriage annulled before he married Jane. That's when she left. She was going to marry Sinjin. And honestly, I don't remember what happened because I don't even know if I finished it. The next film I'm reviewing is Jane Eyre 1943. Uh, this starred Joan Fontaine and Orson Welles. It was black and white. Um, I think the two main actors did well. Um, Joan Fontaine, um, she played a similar character in this as she did in Rebecca, so I thought she did well. Um, Orson Welles can just about play anything. And of course it was an older film, like probably Warner Brothers, and they just, they couldn't adapt Victorian films the way that they do nowadays. Number three is Jane Eyre 1970. This starred George C. Scott and Susanna York. There was a definite age difference between them. That was nice because Susanna York still had color in her hair and George C. Scott was very gray-headed, which was the problem, because Susanna York was obviously not 18, and he looked, I don't know, 60? But I did like him in the part of Mr. Rochester. He was really shouty. I, I did not like Susanna York in this part. Uh, she just didn't seem the Jane Eyre type of person. Also, her hair was, like, red. Jane's been red-headed about three times and blonde one. She is hazel brown-headed. That, that's in the book. Even though I've played Jane Eyre in some of our videos, um, I I'm not in favor of a blonde Jane Eyre. And now I redeem myself for what I said about Emma. I imagine Emma as more of a blonde than a brunette. I'm not sure if this was the first film that they ever did this or not, but at the Lowood Institute, Mr. Brocklehurst cuts Jane and Helen's hair. That was not in the book, and I was a little bit irritated when I read the book and found that it was not in there because first of all that just makes Mr. Brocklehurst look so much worse and if you're such a diehard Christian why would you cut their hair? It was obviously all Hollywood. Alrighty so now we come to Jane Eyre's 1973. Um, I have this one on DVD. It says it is the best loved adaptation of Charlotte Bronte's masterpiece. I kind of doubt that. <laughs> this is the first actual BBC adaptation that I've reviewed so far. So I was very pleased with this one. Um, I watched it recently. I knew that I'd liked it when I was younger, but uh, they spend like 40 minutes on her childhood and that's just too much time there. But after you get past all that, it's actually pretty good. They do a lot of talking. They use a lot of really long words. But, um, other than being really wordy, it's, it's really good. I enjoyed it. Um, there was a whole lot more kissing than I was expecting. Like, older adaptations usually don't have that in it. So I was really shocked, and that explains why I liked it so much when I was younger. The one playing Jane, she narrates the entire thing, like, during conversations and stuff. It's, it's a little annoying. She has a nice voice, but she does not fit the physical description of Jane Eyre, in my opinion. She's definitely not 18, that's for sure. But Mr. Rochester did a good job, he talked a lot. It's a mini-series, okay? It's five-part mini-series, um, so that's, that's a lot of time. And yeah, it's good. Wish they wouldn't have spent so much time in her childhood, though. All right, the next adaptation is 1983. So, um, I would say, in my opinion, this is the one that was most like the book, because when I was reading the book, this is the adaptation that I thought of the most. And it's not something I'm very happy about because Timothy Dalton plays Mr. Rochester and um, I'm not a huge fan of Timothy Dalton, but unfortunately he does the part of Mr. Rochester very well because he talks and he talks and he talks and he talks and that's what Mr. Rochester does in the book. It is very annoying because men don't talk that much. It was a 
miniseries. I can't remember how many episodes, but it's long. But it's a good long, I would say. Jane did good. She was just really short. Um, but she had brown hair. Another thing about this version, it showed more of Jane's passionate side, like when she's grown. You know, I mean, naturally, when she's a child, you see her beat her cousin up. Um, but in this, even when she was grown, she wasn't, like, super quiet and everything. She, she actually had her moments where she got really excited. The next adaptation is Jane Eyre 1996, and it is William Hurt and Charlotte Gainsbourg. Each Mr. Rochester is so different. In this, Mr. Rochester is more quiet. He really doesn't talk as much as the book Mr. Rochester, but even though he's not very shouty, I actually like this Mr. Rochester. There was a definite age difference between them. He looked like he was, what, 35 and she looked 18. Again, in this version, their hair gets cut at Little Wood, and that is not original to the book, and I have a problem with it. There's quite a few differences with this movie, um, also it's about two hours long. Um, when Jane goes to her dying aunt, that's actually when she meets Sinjin, and then when Jane leaves Mr. Rochester, um, she goes straight there instead of being destitute and starving on the moors, which is a little bit disappointing. Overall, it was a decent adaptation, um, Except for, if you watch it with subtitles, um, there's one part where they use a word. Just warning, you know, in case you have a look at When Jane comes back after Mr. Rochester is wounded, um, she doesn't know that his wife is dead yet. It's like she's gonna stay, so that was kind of weird. They didn't really clarify on that, and that's the entire point of the movie. So that didn't really make a lot of sense to me. Next we come to 1997. One person thinks that Sierra and Hines is a little bit more of a violent type Mr. Rochester. I don't have a problem with that. It's about two hours long. Um, so, okay, the reason I really like this version, um, besides the cast, because they, they did look about 20 years apart, um, Mr. Rochester has a mustache, um, but it doesn't bother me as much as some some have. I mean, honestly, when the guy has facial hair, it's just kind of like, uh. I feel like they emphasize more about the Christianity um, theme in the book. Um, you know, I, I believe Jane Eyre says something like, But I have studied the Bible since and have found my own faith in the Lord. Sometimes Jane is not really featured as a Christian, and that's in the book. Right before she leaves Mr. Rochester, after she almost marries him, um, he tries to make her stay, and they really go into why she's not going to stay. Like, she straight out tells him why, and I think that's good, because they're going into the principle of it, and that's, that's the point. I mean, she respected herself, although she was poor, obscure, plain, and little, but she knew who she was, and she wasn't going to lose that to Mr. Rochester. Now we come to the second to the last Jane Eyre adaptation I'm reviewing today. It is Jane Eyre 2006. This is a miniseries. So up to this point, um, the Jane Eyre adaptations have been visually decent. Um, of course, you know, British people do like to swear, so they're maybe a couple words here and there. This uh, wasn't bad as far as language uh, that I recall. The problem with it is visual scenes that I do not watch. I skip. Um, anytime Mr. Rochester starts to reminisce, I skip those parts because they're just, they're not decent. Um, so in case you don't want to see stuff yourself or if you have little kids, I'm just warning you. Also, there's a game that, that uh, the party play uh, that come to his house that we always skip to. It's basically Jane Eyre, but they did take a lot of liberties. There is a man at the party uh, with like Blanche Ingram in them who is sort of a psychologist and he likes to study twins and they kind of use the connection that twins have in their minds to one another to explain Jane and Rochester's relationship, which in the book is more spiritual than some weird connection. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. It was almost like it was made to be kind of creepy, but there's a Mad People painting that they stare at. I guess that's supposed to kind of give you hints about Mr. Rochester's wife, but it's just sort of weird. Um, also, it's a little bit more of a kissy-kissy romance. Just gonna warn you. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Sorry, that was weird. At the end of the, the miniseries, Adele is part of the family. They show her with them. Sometimes they only briefly mention that in the end of, of some of the adaptations. 
sometimes they do not and that's something my mom especially likes i'm actually not even sure if that's in the book or not but loved mr rochester mr rochester was great love him i apparently really liked this mr rochester anyways we're not gonna talk about that. okay the last one is 2011 if i'm correct this is the last adaptation ever made of jane Eyre. it's about two hours um it starts in the middle of the movie, which isn't bad, it's just different. Uh, you said it started in the middle of the movie. It started in the middle of the story. <laughs> it starts it's... in the middle of the movie, and then you have to skip it back. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> yeah, what he said. I found this adaptation very, very morbid. The music was sad and slow. The actors did well enough. They, I mean, they looked like a Jane in Rochester. She had, like, reddish hair, though. But, um, I guess they could have passed off as, you know, what, 18 and 38. Never mind. They, they could have passed off as those ages. It's just their acting seemed really stale and unemotional. I, I just, I can't explain. It's like Jane never smiled at all. After watching this, like, over two times, I'm wondering what the point of the movie was. I will warn you, there is a painting in this that they like to scan over. It is not a decent painting, so just warning y'all. There's like two scenes of that. One thing that's hilarious about every single Jane Eyre adaptation, though, is when they start talking about how ugly they are, when he asks her if she thinks he's handsome, I'm sitting there thinking how cute he is, and then she says no, and I'm like, what's wrong with you? Do you find me handsome? Oh, no, sir. Do you think me handsome? No, sir. <laughs> you find me handsome, Miss Eyre? No, sir. <laughs> Do you think me handsome, Jen? No, sir. <laughs> Do you think me handsome? No, sir. So I could argue which one's the best or which one I love the most, um, but that's not the point of this review. My point is there is no ultimate best Jane Eyre adaptation because when I read the book I was completely shocked. It's entirely different from any of the movies ever made. It's a spiritual autobiography of sorts. One book review that I'm going to recommend that you should watch is Prayer U's um, Jane Eyre book review. I totally agreed with it. I loved it. My advice is read this book. Jane Eyre is the story of a girl who longs to be loved, yet she is treated with contempt and hated but she forgives and rises above all that with God as her strength and he certainly does not fail her when she has to leave the only person who loves her on earth. It had to happen though because in the book she says that her future husband was becoming to her her entire world and more than the world almost her hope of heaven. He stood between her and every thought of religion as an eclipse intervenes between man and the broad sun. She could not in those days see God for his creature, of whom she had made an idol. So she had to be taken away from Mr. Rochester. And when that idol gets torn down in her heart, Mr. Rochester is humbled, she goes back to him who is now free and finally gets to be loved the way she's always wanted to be. Okay, then goodbye.